the owners had and it hasn't had any fix. And it hasn't had any fix and it hasn't had any fix. So it reminded me of my Christmas practice that I bought last year, like not this year, we just had like two Christmases ago. And I bought it right before Christmas from Kroger, you know, which is the greatest place to buy a plant. And it looked like it was about to meet Jesus. It was shriveled and dry and awful. It was also really cheap. So I thought, you know, it's got cactus in the name, so I probably can not kill it. And it's super cheap. So I bought it in our home and watered it, and Christmas came, and there was no flower. Because you know, they're supposed to flower like once a year at Christmas. So, nothing. So I was like, okay. And so then I kind of forgot to water it for a while. Then I remembered, and then I forgot, and I remembered. And so we went a whole other year, and Christmas came. No flower. So then, but it was still green. I'll give it that. And I thought, well, so we are we just moved and so I'm like, we're taking the cactus with us. And guess what? <laughs> it has a flower. Finally. Like it took so it got to move with us because it finally had a flower. But you know, if you're an owner of a Christmas cactus, or really a lot of plants, you have to be super, super patient. Unless you have a much better green thumb than me. Because it just, it just takes a while, and it takes some effort. Like, you have to make sure it gets sun and water, and, and eventually, it bears good fruit. And that's kind of, you know, we're kind of like my Christmas cactus. Sometimes we get a little dry and unproductive. Um, sometimes we need a little extra special care. And sometimes we need a little extra time and a little extra patience. But as bad, I wish you'd taken a picture of this when I bought it because it looks so bad. Um, even when we feel like we are at our worst, at our weakest, at our driest, at our most unproductive, there is still, there is still that potential that with the care and with the time that we will bear good fruit and we will and we do. And so the message today it's a reminder that even when we don't feel like we're quite there yet, um, that God gives us the time and he gives us the access to the things that we need so that we can bear that good fruit. One of those things is simply uh, being here, being in the community of faith, coming to the table um, for communion, coming for worship, coming for Sunday school, coming for study, coming for fellowship, coming to clean up the church grounds. All of those things help us to grow and help us to bear good fruit. And I'm very proud to be here with all these people working together to, to water our dry spots and, and grow a little bit stronger. So we love you and we're glad you're here today. my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, 
so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. You will read the psalm responsibly, verse by verse. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your steadfast love is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My spirit is content as with the richest of foods, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you on my bed, and meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My whole being brings to you, your right hand holds me Christ. It was a 
747 plane loaded up at LaGuardia in New York City. It had been on the tarmac for a long time on a hot summer's day when it finally took off. 14 minutes into its flight, it exploded, killing 230 men, women, and children. One of the passengers was an eighth grade classmate of mine. She had an infant baby in her arms. She was going to see her husband in Paris. And she was killed just like that. Investigators determined the plane crashed because an electrical short happened right by the fuel tanks and it exploded. Could God have prevented it? Was God angry at somebody on the plane? Was it just pure chance? Was it just randomness? Or was it part of some plan of God? There is no easy answer here. There is no easy answer. So in our gospel lesson, Jesus brings up two tragedies that were on the minds of the people in his day that he was talking to. One, we would probably consider human evil. Well, I would consider human evil. The other is that random accident, much like that plane crash. And Jesus brings them up. The first one, he called it Herod mixing the blood of the Galileans in the temple. Uh, the Josephus, the first century historian, says what happened was the Galileans went to the temple in Jerusalem. Herod figured there was going to be trouble, so he preempted the trouble and slaughtered them right there in the temple with his Roman legions at his fingertips. And so these Galileans made a trip to Jerusalem, a holy, happy day to go to the temple. They're met by the Roman legion who slaughters them there in the temple. The people are mad, they're angry, they want God's revenge on the Romans. And Jesus brings it up and he says, do you think they were any worse than anyone else? No, they weren't. And then he mentions 18 people killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on the, on the people in Jerusalem. Evidently, it was part of the big outer wall of Jerusalem, a big huge tower. It collapsed and killed 18 people. A tragedy. And Jesus said, do you think those 18 did anything wrong? Do you think they deserved to die? Do you think they were worse sinners than anyone else in Jerusalem? And Jesus says, no, they weren't. That is not why they died. Jesus brings these up, but his response is, well, one day we're all going to die too. <laughs> That's kind of his response. So what do we make of this? What do we make of this? He brings up the problem of evil, he brings up the randomness of death, and then he says, we're all going to die, uh, we're all going to perish. So maybe he's saying, how you die is not important, but how you live is what's important. How you die is not the main thing, but how you live is the main thing. And then he goes on to talk about a fruitful life, and he talks about a fig tree. So live a life of love, live a life of service, live a life of charity. So Jesus brings up this parable of the fig tree, and he says, give it more time to grow and produce. Even saying, give the fig tree more nourishment, give it the manure and the nourishment and water so it can produce. So what is he saying to us? They be taken all together. Jesus is definitely saying, do not blame the victims. He's definitely saying that. And he's saying, none of these were acts of God. No way, in no shape is he saying God wanted these things to happen. And he's saying these are not part of God's plan just to kill random people um, in Jerusalem. But Jesus changes the focus from the death and the tragedy to how we are going to live our lives in our world. Are our lives fruitful lives, as he talks about the fig tree? Do our lives need some nourishment and some water so that we can grow and produce? Now, this is a Lenten reading. This reading is chosen for this time of year because it's Lent. And Lent is a time for self-examination. Lent is a time for self-assessment. So maybe it's asking us, what do you want to do before you die? What is important to you? knowing that one day we will all perish? What needs to happen to get you going in life and to doing those things you think God is calling you to do? And how can God and the Holy Spirit lead you and set you on right pathways for his name's sake? 
Jesus seems to be saying, there is more time, he's going to give the fig tree another year, but there's not all the time in the world. But we all someday will die, just as those who die by tragedy die. Yet just now, there is more time for you and I. More time to change, more time to love, more time to give, more time to live in a deeper relationship with God and a deeper relationship with others. I am sure that God does not send tragedy upon us. And I'm sure God has no plans to harm us in random ways. But and I do know that God is with us in the midst of tragedy. And that is one thing that speaks clearly in the cross, that God is with us in the midst of tragedy. Let us turn to God, that God may embrace us. Let us turn away from our self-destructive habits. And let us turn to God's habits of love, forgiveness, and mercy. We do not know why evil exists, but we do know that God is with us, and that Jesus calls us to love God and to love our neighbors, and that God is with us through it all, through those times of tragedy, through those times of blessings. God promises to be with us and to guide us. And may we be like that fig tree or like that Christmas cactus and can grow and blossom and do what God has designed us to do, to grow in deeper relationships with love and service to one another. Let us pray. Lord God, we live in the midst of a world that is full of tragedy and full of evil, and we see news every day of innocent people fleeing their homes bombed, and not knowing what will happen tomorrow. In the midst of this, Lord, may your church rise up to be a sign of love and grace and mercy and help. We thank you for the generosity of the saints here, and we pray that you will raise up leaders that we can live in the peaceful community you call us to be part of, this new kingdom, this community of love that, that you have called us to be a part of. Lord God, we ask for your wisdom and guidance as we do wrestle with heart knowing that you ultimately will be with us and give us your comfort and your love. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our right, hymn of the day is um, hymn 763, the Red Wings.
pray for the church around the world in all its forms, for pastors, deacons, bishops, chaplains, and mission developers, for church councils, committee chairs, and all lay ministry leaders, for St. Luke as we travel together on our Lenten journey. Merciful God, please hear our prayer. For the health of this planet and the well-being of its creatures, for lands impacted by droughts and the risk of wildfires, for fig trees and vineyards that produce fruit for our nourishment and delight, for animal habitats threatened by climate change. Merciful God, please hear our prayer. For those called into positions of civic responsibility, for judges, attorneys, and court administrators tasked with uncovering truth and delivering justice, for activists and cast a vision of a more compassionate and equitable society. Merciful God, we see our prayer. For those who call upon you for mercy, for all who live in poverty and experience hunger, for any who feel tested beyond their strength, for those who are hospitalized or near death, and for all in need of healing, for an end to the war in Ukraine, and for refugees seeking safety. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We rejoice for our new church staff members, for Angela Schultz as Director of Music Ministries, and Mark Lopez Floor as Director of Youth and Family Ministries. We give thanks for the many ways God calls all of us to service, and we give thanks for our St. Luke Church staff. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Please pour out your spirits those with health concerns, Opal, Kath, Jesse, Wade, Debbie B, Brooks, Lauren, Andrea, Joe, Wayne, John, Patty, Judy, Laura, Jay, Brandy, Eleonora, Matt Jr., Jill, Kurt, Mark R, Sherry, Samantha, Jane, Lauren, Jen, Ashley, Allie, Wade, Patty A, Andy W, Mark D, and Sheila. Merciful God, we ask for comfort and guidance for Patty C, Sue, Clay, Betty S, Anita, Sandra, Mary B, Tyson T, the Brock family, Jennifer W on the next chapter of her life, for peace in Ukraine, prayers that will treat people with kindness, for refugees, guidance for difficult decisions, for Sergeant Linda Andrews and her daughter, Prayers to keep all our military service people safe from harm. Merciful God, we offer praises for spring break, family time, travel, Lenten devotions, Angela, Marta, Darren's new job, and wish happy birthday to Lynn, Kathy, Mary B, Lily, Casey, and Lee. Merciful God, we see our prayer. We offer our prayers, prayers both spoken aloud or silently in our hearts. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated as this time of service, we normally have to be passing the offering plate. The offering plate is on the entrance way. If you would please fill out your communication card, let us know that you're here and how you may get in touch with you. And also thank you for your gifts and your offerings, and may God bless those and multiply them for the good of God's church. Work of God's church. And now we'll have a time for silent reflection.
I invite you to stand for a great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. And after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray together as Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of God, and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom
You see, God's blessing. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor. And may the Lord give you peace. Amen. Let's go forth singing. What a fellowship, what a joy to mind.